What's up YouTube, I'm Blake and this is my demonstration video for Apple's new Thunderbolt to Gigabit Ethernet adapter with speed comparison to their USB to Ethernet adapter. Now they've had the USB to Ethernet adapter out for quite a while. I think they um, released it around the time when the original MacBook Airs came out, uh, but the new Thunderbolt to Gigabit Ethernet adapter did just come out recently alongside their new Retina MacBook Pros, which no longer have a built-in Ethernet port. Coincidence? I don't think so. Apple got rid of Ethernet in the new Retina MacBook Pro and also the MacBook Airs for two reasons. Mainly because the port is too tall for the slim profile, but also another relevant point is that Apple customers use Wi-Fi a lot. It's at home, at work, at school, coffee shops, restaurants, hotels, etc. Pretty much anywhere you'd need internet access. But some people still need wired Ethernet connectivity, either because Wi-Fi isn't available, or more importantly, especially in the case of Gigabit Ethernet, because it's much, much faster. It's very useful for fast file transfers over local networks, which I'm going to demonstrate for you in just a minute. A quick point I wanted to make before the hands-on, I work in the IT field, I use a PC all day long, I work with countless network PCs and other peripherals, and I can tell you, Ethernet, especially Gigabit Ethernet, is here to stay. It's not going away anytime soon. It's used extensively in business network infrastructure. So thank you to Apple for not forgetting about the big picture on your quest for wafer-thin laptops. So here are the adapters out of their packaging. This is the Thunderbolt to Gigabit Ethernet adapter, and this is the USB to Ethernet adapter. The Thunderbolt, I'm going to be using a... Um, MacBook Air for this demonstration. The Thunderbolt port on this model is on the right hand side and there's a USB port over here or here so it doesn't matter where you plug it in. These are very simple to set up. All you have to do is plug them in, turn off your Wi-Fi and plug in your patch cable or Ethernet cable to the adapter and you should be good to go. So I made a couple diagrams because I wanted to point out all the different parts of this file transfer equation. Let's start with the Thunderbolt diagram first. You can see the iMac has built-in SSD and that SSD is capable of reading over 400 megabytes per second. And I've got that iMac connected to a gigabit ethernet switch and the gigabit ethernet maximum transfer speed is approximately 128 megabytes per second. And then I've got an Ethernet cable going from the Gigabit Ethernet switch to the Thunderbolt to Gigabit Ethernet adapter. Now Thunderbolt is capable of over a thousand megabytes per second and again Gigabit Ethernet about 128 megabytes per second. And the MacBook Air has a, a built-in SSD also that's capable of writing over 250 megabytes per second. And of course it's got the Thunderbolt port that's again capable of over a thousand megabytes per second transfer speed. So I expect the bottleneck in this first test to be the Gigabit Ethernet standard. Uh, I expect the transfer speed to be about 120 megabytes per second because there's always a little bit of overhead. So let's start the first file transfer and we'll see what the result is. Alright, you can see I've got the Thunderbolt to Gigabit Ethernet adapter hooked up and I've got my blue patch cable or Ethernet cable going to my Gigabit switch and there's another cable going from that switch to the iMac. So I'm ready to, uh, what I've done is I've connected through the network to my iMac and I'm ready to drag and drop this uh, file from the iMac to my desktop here on the MacBook Air and I've got my iPhone, I'm going to use it as a stopwatch. We'll see how long it takes. Here we go. So it's not going to take very long, but while that's happening I did want to zoom in and show you it's receiving data at 116 megabytes per second. Very close to what I expected. And you can see it's more than half done with the transfer. And it's almost finished. About 34 seconds to transfer that 3.7 gigabyte file over the gigabit ethernet connection from the iMac to the MacBook Air. So let's have a look at this second diagram. It's pretty much the same except the adapter is different obviously. It's USB to Ethernet, but it's not Gigabit Ethernet. It's actually Fast Ethernet, which is slower than Gigabit Ethernet by a factor of 10. 
Gigabit Ethernet is 1000 megabits per second and fast Ethernet is only 100 megabits per second, which if you do the math works out to about 12 and a half megabytes per second. So I also made note on here that the adapter presumably uses USB 2.0 which is uh, good for about 60 megabytes per second, but again, it doesn't matter. Uh, lowest common denominator is going to be the fast Ethernet standard, which is 12 and a half, again, uh, megabytes per second approximately. Uh, I also made a note on here, the, the new MacBook Air has this uh, USB 3 standard, which should be good for about half of the speed of Thunderbolt, um, which is half the speed would be about 640 megabytes per second, but again, not going to matter. So um, I'm expecting this file transfer to be somewhere around 12 megabytes per second, again, because of overhead. Uh, let's start it out and we'll see if I'm right. Okay, so same scenario as before, except I'm using the different adapter, USB to fast Ethernet. Um, I'm going to drag the file from the iMac to the desktop of the MacBook Air and start the timer. Initially, estimating time remaining, about six minutes. We'll see how long it takes, but let's come down here and look, look at that. The transfer speed about 11.7 megabytes per second. You can see quite a bit slower with this adapter. Okay, we're just about finished. And it's done. Five minutes and 25 seconds approximately to transfer that 3.7 gigabyte file from the iMac to the MacBook Air using the USB to fast Ethernet adapter on the MacBook Air. And the last file transfer demo, just for kicks, is going to be a transfer over Wi-Fi. That wasn't the focus of this video, so I didn't create a diagram, but I just wanted to show you uh, that it's going to be quite a bit slower. I will um, say that the MacBook Air has built-in N wire or wireless networking, 802.11n, and um, the iMac is connected to my router. Uh, it's directly wired connected to my router and my router is supposed to be good for 150 megabits per second uh, wireless connection, but uh, that would turn out to be about 18 megabytes per second, but you're going to see here that it's actually not even going to be close to that and I'll kind of explain why. Let's start the transfer um, again from the iMac to the MacBook Air over Wi-Fi. All right, and it's going to come up with a number here to see how long it's going to take. But let's come down here and see how fast it's going. All right, right now we're not even at a megabyte per second. There's two megabytes per second, three and a half, under three again. almost four, whoops. So it's variable. And that's just the nature of a wireless connection. Uh, this is going through, again, my wireless router. There could be and there are other devices connected to here that may or may not be uh, sending who knows what amount of data. Um, and not only that, there could be other wireless interference that is causing a bottleneck. It's just, it, it's convenient, but it's going to be much slower. And again, um, here we go, 20 minutes. Uh, now it's down to 18 minutes. I'm not going to actually wait that long, but yeah, so uh, it's, it's going to take significantly longer to make the same transfer over Wi-Fi compared to even the slower Ethernet standard. So why should you actually get one of these Ethernet adapters? It's a wireless age. Everything's uh, wireless now. No more wires. Why, why do we need to bother ourselves with this? Well, you just saw it's a lot faster. If you need to move around large files, don't torture yourself with Wi-Fi. Even wireless N 
Um, I'm sure that there are going to be situations where you're going to get faster, maybe even much faster, but not nearly as fast as a wired adapter. So uh, if you need to move large files, get one of these. If you frequent places where Wi-Fi isn't available or it's slow, get one of these adapters. In the U.S., they're $30 each, which, yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it could save you anywhere from several minutes to countless hours. So how much is your time worth, basically? So one last piece of advice, if you have a Thunderbolt equipped Mac and you're able to make the choice between the USB version and the Thunderbolt version, I would definitely recommend the Thunderbolt version. It's more future-proof, it's obviously much faster, and chances are if you have a Thunderbolt equipped Mac, uh, your USB ports are going to be precious few. So get that and I don't think you'll regret it. If not, get the USB version, you'll still... Uh, find that it will come in handy, I'm sure. So that is all I wanted to cover for this video. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Again, my name is Blake, and thank you for watching.